What's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome to another edition of The Check-In. We're on Season 2, Episode 3. We're three deep in this thing. Really excited to be able to continue to have this. Uh, if you are tuning in with us on the IG Live, coming live and direct, make sure you go uh, to the comment section and let us know where you're tuning in from. Really excited today, man. We got my guy, Anthony Trucks, getting ready to join us here on The Check-In in just a minute. As you know, excuse me, as we get things started, I got to ask you to subscribe to three things. We got a lot going on, and I want to make sure that everybody's in tune with what we've got going on. So I got to get you to subscribe to three things for me. First and foremost, you got to subscribe to the, to the podcast check-in. The podcast check-in is now on all of your uh, um, uh, podcast sites, right? So go on there, search for The Check-In with Black Menswear, download this. We got the first two episodes with my guy Jimmy Allen um, that we had on, on, on last week. Uh, and my guy Johnny Bailey from week one, right? So go and tap into the check-in. Thing number two I got to get you to subscribe to is our YouTube channel. If you guys don't know, Black Men's Bar launched a YouTube channel. You can imagine if you can see our feed and you know what our Instagram feed looks like, imagine the YouTube channel. So go ahead and click the subscribe button on that thing for me too. And the third thing I need to subscribe to is uh, our newsletter. One thing, we're getting ready to do a huge giveaway that we're going to announce this week. You can't uh, be entered into the giveaway unless you are in, uh, um, unless you are on, excuse me, our email database to get the newsletter. So go and subscribe to that too. All right, I'm excited. You guys ought to be excited, man. We got Anthony Trucks uh, coming in here to the check in. <laughs> really excited, man. Th this brother is all about pushing positive energy, bringing out the best in people. And so to be able to have him come on and join me here on the check-in so we can talk to you guys about bringing out the best in yourself and, and giving yourself the extra motivation, the extra boost. I'm super excited. So without further ado, Anthony Trucks in here. Again, appreciate you guys checking in with us here on the check-in. My man, Anthony, what up, though? How you doing, man? Look, I'm doing well. Nice How about you, sir? I'm I'm good. I'm good. Just the thing. I've had a long day, man. Hey, we, man. We, get to, hey. we get to put the cherry on top right now. I've been rocking. After we're done, I've been twelve straight hours today. Ooh, bro. Well, shoot. Yeah. Let me let me make sure I give you something good to end your day with. You know what I'm hey, saying? I'm, 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 <laughs> for it. I'm here for the people, though, man. I'm 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 good. I can pull it up. I'm not gonna lie, though. The moment that we hang up, I'm going inside. I got a glass of wine with my name on it. Hey, for uh, sure. <laughs> tomorrow's my birthday, man. So I'm hey, gonna, man, happy uh, I'm happy early turn. birthday, man. Thank you. I'm yeah. going to turn down tonight. I'm going to turn to go to bed turn early. Down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going big. I don't do all that. Oh, man. Well, happy early birthday to you, man. The 1st of December. We got to remember that moving forward, people. December 1st, Anthony Truck's birthday. There make it sure, is. Make sure yeah. we know it. Yeah, man. <laughs> Well, my brother, man, I really appreciate having you here on the check-in. And so I, I love letting everyone do their own official introduction. So I'm going to go ahead and let you make your formal introduction. I know who you are. Shout yeah. out to my guy, Cap, for uh, introducing to me to yeah. me to you a while back. But get, let me let you give your official Anthony Trucks introduction to the Black My official audience. Anthony Trucks. I mean, I don't know if I have an official one, but I'll give you what I got, <laughs> man. I am a, uh, I'm a, a man of God. I'm a, I'm a husband. I'm a father. I'm a speaker, author, and a coach. I'm a founder of a company called Identity Shift, where we have uh, created, created what's called the Shift Method. It helps people make shifts happen in their lives, no matter if it's uh, yeah. health, wealth, relationships. Um, it's really a matter of saying there's a lot of things we want to do in the world, and I've gone through a lot of crazy in my life to get to a point where I've, I've done what I call cross a lot of finish lines. So I now turn back and teach other people how to run the race a little bit better. So, man, I've Perfect. former NFL athlete, American Ninja Warrior on TV, author, speaker, a whole bunch of craziness, man. But the root of me, try to do some good stuff for the world. I love it. I love it. It's spot on. It, and it speaks to you, man. It, it speaks to who you are and, the, you know, the energy that you bring to everything is, is really what I love. Um, cool. The positivity, all of that. Because if you're yeah. fired up, the people got no choice but to be fired up. You got, back, yeah, right? you got, the, the, you got to make sure you lead, especially as a leader, you got to lead with that. And it's not that I force energy. There's times when I'm tired, but I also realize uh, that for some people, it's the first time ever seeing me. So I come on like, yeah. had a long day. Like, that doesn't, that doesn't serve anybody. Right? Right. So it's, it's right. a matter of realizing, like, I'm put in a position. I was called for something special in life. And whether I want to do it or not, I'm doing it. I share a story. I love it. But the beauty is... I realize that my story is not my story. It's my experience. It's your story. So it's a gift that I am called to give, and I give it amazing every time, man. I love, I love how you put that. It's, it's not my story. It's, it's, it's my experience, but it's your story, how, yeah. people, how people receive it on the other end, man. That's, that is a great segue into my first question for you, right? So Black Men's Word is all about changing the narrative, right? Yeah. You're talking about your experience and your story. So you, my brother, Anthony Trucks, how are you changing the narrative? 
Uh, you know, it's interesting. I changed the narrative by uh, by keeping quiet. It's a weird way to look at it, but not keeping totally quiet. So I grew up in a really weird environment. Like my real mom's white. I never knew my real dad. I was put in foster care. I got adopted by an all white family. So I didn't grow up around black community, like at mm -hmm. all. It was very diverse. I was getting called racial slurs at school all the time. And so it wasn't until I got to high school that I actually was around people that looked like me. But then I was the Oreo, right? So um, <laughs> yeah. I was a guy that didn't speak like everybody else spoke. I just yeah, didn't have yeah, a yeah. place where I fit perfectly. And the way that I look at, I guess, the narrative now is a lot of people's, hey, man, you've accomplished a lot. You, you got through college and a scholarship. You played in the NFL. You did all these great things. Man, you got to be a louder voice for the people. And I realized that there, that's the truth to an extent. And I found that I find myself in a lot of rooms where I'm the only guy that looks like me. Yeah. I don't seek yeah. it out. I just I seek another level. And I found that, that I have a very specific, I guess, for me, a calling to, to be a guy that succeeds at a certain level so that I make sure it's visible as an opportunity for people that look like me. Yeah. So I'm not trying to go out there and say I don't care about black community. I do. But if I go and start being that loud, there's certain rooms I can't get into. Yeah. And it's not to say somebody shouldn't do it. People should do it, but it's not it's not gonna be me. Not because I don't support and care, but the way that I do is I do fight against things that I've had my black moments, man. I've had those things happen. And I grasp like this is this is my journey to fight, my journey to watch yeah. and to walk. And I'll, I'll support the other guys doing it, but I change the narrative by being quite literally a change of a visual of what you see as a person in a certain level, in a certain capacity. So yeah. my narrative is I'm writing my narrative as an example, for my son and yeah. my daughter who look yeah. like me, right? They've, they've got to realize that there's something they can go and accomplish. And then I start carving out this different little path for people to also follow. I, love, I, I like the fact that one thing that we want everybody to realize, especially that we're talking about changing the narrative, um, everyone's, everyone's path is different. You know, it, mm -hmm. one, thing that, one thing that they like to, we like to make sure that we point out about us as a community, Black people aren't monolithic. Right. It's not we're not all the same and we come in so different ways and we all have different experiences. But one thing that you and I resonate with both of the same is like, how am I making it better for somebody else coming behind? Right. How am That's I true. opening up? Um, how am I preparing others to be successful? Because, again, the path to success is different for everybody, but it, everybody. it tends to be going towards a finish line. And but you how we see also, possible. if yeah. it's not possible, I'm not shooting down that, that race path in the first place. And I think no, right, possibility right. is, is a big piece. So that's all I want. I want to be a visual of what possibility looks like. Facts. Yeah, I love it. it. I love it. Now, now with that, right? So, so <laughs> what possibility looks like? I mean, you talked about when we got on about a 12 hour day, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Early, going, mm -hmm. going through and like, hey, let's, let, let's wrap this thing up with a, with a bang for the day. Mm -hmm. How do you, being somebody that tends to have days like that and, and, and um, is pretty consistent with, with, with that, like how do you main, maintain productivity? Sometimes yeah. people get burnt out along the way. I'm a, I'm a you know, a, a, it a, a victim of that, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, how do, what do you do or how do you maintain productivity throughout the day? Man, I'm, I'm a systems guy, man. So I got this thing. It's quite literally a plan I made for, my, uh, for myself uh, years ago, like 2011. And so what I realized is rhythm's a big thing. Uh, we'll, we'll call it black Americans and black people. We got some good rhythm, right? We're good. You know? But the same capacity, we don't uh, realize there's a rhythm to life, man. It's the same capacity of how I have to operate and flow. If everything I do feels like I'm having to use willpower, man, I get nothing done. Mm. I'll always struggle. Always, I'll be, I'll be going just as far as I can maintain and manage. Today, I'm not burned out. I'm, yeah. I actually purposely structure this day, but I manage my energy throughout. I went outside and walked with some clients and talked for a good mm. hour. Like, I got to break that. But I'm aware of typical, like, my rhythm that allows me to get stuff done is I know, I know how my life is structured, when I'm starting, when I'm stopping, what fits in, what doesn't fit in how to hold and keep boundaries so I don't get distracted. Yeah. And I know how to execute when I don't want to in the moment. But what's unique is when I get to a good flow, all the things that everybody looks at me and says, and how do you do all of that? Quite literally for me, it's like, oh, man, it's just my Wednesday. It's yeah. easy for me. Right. Right. And, when, and when you can get to that level, it's right. not a matter of whether I'm productive or not. It's a matter of it's just my natural flow and rhythm yeah. to be able to get those things done. And if people are shooting for how do I execute on this and – don't worry about the execution. Create a rhythm that allows you to get a certain amount of stuff done and then get stuff done in those rhythms, like in those mm. little spaces. I'm telling mm. you, man, that's the game changer for me. It's a process of what I do. But, man, productivity, it shouldn't always be this thing where you're trying to be productive. It should be who you are yeah. and your rhythm to be getting things done. Now, with that, with that too, as a follow-up, um, do you find yourselves, you know, as, as a, a lot of people do, get distracted, and then when you get distracted, it's so hard for you to get back 
to oh, exactly. It's it's an issue. In fact, there's studies that show that if you uh, if you have something going on and someone distracts you for up to sixty seconds, it can take as much as fifteen minutes to get back to focus flow. Right. But if I'm working on a funnel or something on the, on the computer, building some things out, and it wasn't my norm. I was an NFL guy, right? So, and we're not taught we're not doing computer work. Yeah. But if I got like sixteen tabs, I got like twenty two tabs open right now. If I'm working on something and I got I know everything's at, I'm going page to page, and you step in and ask me a sixty second question, I am lost again. Yeah. Right. I have to go right. back and figure it all back out. And so that's one of the big things for boundaries. I got to set and keep that. Because if I don't, then I may not be able to get in an hour's time sixty minutes of, of focused work. I might get fifteen because right. two people interrupted me, or I answered right. the phone, or I shot a text message back. Those little things, man. I use an egg timer, literally. I have a small egg timer, and I set it. And when I get the time set for what it's got to be, I click it and I go, and it counts down. And so, yeah. if my egg timer doesn't tell me to uh, to do anything, like I, I don't do anything. Or if I want to work on something, I'm sitting here trying to figure out, like, hey. Can I work on it? No, like the egg timer didn't go off. Therefore, it did, I'm not <laughs> yeah, right, right. And yeah. sticking to it, sticking to it is the important part too. Yes, stick it to it. I, I, I like man. that. It's you can set, you can set it, but you got to keep it a lot. Of, a lot of right. people they do a great job of planning, but then they uh, they have, they have no way to actually execute on it. And some people they buy planners with no idea how to plan. It's like I'm gonna get a planner. And I'm gonna get it done tomorrow. Like what time? I don't know. I'm just, I'm gonna get it. Okay, <laughs> so you're, if you feel like doing it, you might do it. But if right. you don't feel like it tomorrow, don't get done. Right, and that happens over and over for a lot of people, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, no. I once once I started sticking to a system myself and and actually focusing on the calendar again. You just hit it like until you actually go by it versus just saying, "Okay, I got it." Uh, but actually going by it, I I saw efficiency uh, increases, yeah. you know, from 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 across the board, right? And and Everything. my uh, uh, my work life, you know, that that work life balance became even more efficient because of like. Huh? Okay, I'm done at this point. I got to cut this off because I, now I got to do family time. And, and yeah. to to an extent where it's like you said, it's it's something I look forward to, and I'm able to cut it off and like, okay, I'll get to that first thing in the morning. Yeah. I ain't got you know do that do that at this yeah, point. Yeah, that, that's also having a little that's maturity, which will tell you that if you don't do it now, the world's not going to end. No, that's and it's also <laughs> it's also a concept that tells me that like if if I can't be focused at work, I got to take work home. So I go home with work. And it's been a weird, like, last couple of months. But typically, like, I'm able to come home, and I can cut it off with the laptop away, phones up. And what happens is now I can be present with the family. Now, if I'm not, and I'm coming home with work, my wife's angry. My, my yeah. kids, they don't get dad. And then, I get, then I'm in fights, bro. I'm fighting and arguing. I go back to work, and I'm unfocused, unproductive. Right. I come back. Right. It's a vicious negative cycle, man. Yeah. But understanding how to make progress. Because the thing is, a lot of people, what we think may take three hours, can only take you 30 minutes if you do it right. Right. And yeah. systems, how to stay focused, set boundaries. So when people, if you think about it, I can honestly do within a day, this day, I'm not even kidding. I have gotten more done today than some people will get done all week. Right. I'm not joking. I'm, I'm dead serious. In one 12 hour day, I've got more done than someone get done all week. Yeah. So at the end of a year, if I've been able to do that for five days in a seven day week, you have a year's worth of progress. I got five. Yeah. And it's not because right. I'm smarter, not because I work faster, but I set right. boundaries. I got to process and I execute. So you'll never catch me. And that's, that's yeah. the thing that people don't grasp. It's not just about being productive for a minute. It's just about how can I stay focused? Oh, Angie Lee's on. What's up, Angie Lee? She's awesome. You got to talk to her. She's not black, but she's cool. Wow. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Or the black menswear thing. I mean, I just want to make it. It's a joke. Everybody was thinking it. Everybody was thinking it. But I'm, I said No, it. good stuff. Good, good stuff. Well, look at, looking back on, you, you hit on the uh, M word, maturity, right? Growth yeah. over time, maturity. How would... Um, or what would you say to your, your 20 year old self, um, mm -hmm. just as a piece of advice, would it be that like, you know, focus on, on that mm -hmm. aspect of it or, or, or something, something a little deeper. Interesting. I mean, my 20 year old was in a different, so I was 20 years old. I was a, a sophomore in college. <laughs> I was having a kid, man. I don't know what I would, I thought I got to wrap <laughs> it up. Uh, anyways, no, nah, it was a good accident. It, it right. Right. Accident. I love you. Love you, baby. Oh, yeah. He's, he's sitting there <laughs> right. in the background right now. listening to me say things about him. Um, but no, man, I, I think back then, I, oddly, I didn't have to think about it. I had my life planned for me. The team yeah. was planning when yeah. I woke up, yeah, when right, I went right. to sleep, when I was lifting, right? So to be honest, though, when I got out of the of sports, out of the, you know, the NFL, that's when it all hit. Because I had to figure mm -hmm. out, like, how do I get all these big dreams I got done? And I'm the one manning the, the, the making of the schedule. It's right. been incredibly difficult to get to the point of being the guy who I myself and managing and structuring this entire calendar Right. But it, it's man, it was it's probably the most like most productive thing for me because I have a wife who has businesses and I help her and her stuff. I just more like handyman here and there, but I'm present when she needs me to be. My kids got a dad who's here. I pick him up in the morning, drop him off on here, drop him off, pick him up at, at the end of the day. 
Um, they got stuff they got to do. Like I have all this stuff going on, mm -hmm. but I still make more progress than most people who are single, who mm -hmm. have, you know, time. They're right. like, how do you do it? I'm like, it's a cup. One, in my time, I've been building up the skill sets for stuff. Where you're sitting, chilling, going to the bars, I'm learning and building and building so that what might tactically skill set take you three hours, I can do in 30 minutes because I've yeah. spent the last three years building, right? Yeah. And then on top of that, my 30 minutes, when I say I'm going to do it, I actually do it. Whereas you find a way to get distracted or procrastinate <laughs> or make some weird yeah. excuse. Yeah. And so yeah. now I get to the point of not only do I have the skill, but I'm getting more done faster at a higher quality. All because mm. of how I've been able to stay consistent, put the plan in place, execute on it. And now it's easy, man. Now the yeah. things that like people stress off, I'm like, that's, that's my Tuesday. That's yeah. my Wednesday, yeah, one yeah, before yeah. noon, you know? And it's yeah. not that I'm special, but it's like I did the work to create what seems special to the outside. That consistency, once it, like you said, once it got in, you had to work at it too. You know, that's, again, it wasn't oh, something yeah. that you woke up with. One day, like, you know what? I, can, I, I know how to be official all of my time. It's like, no, yeah. it, it took Anybody time to can do through. this. Yeah. The, the thing is, people think like they'll make the statement of, uh, you know, I'm just not that good with time or like, oh, I just, I'm, I'm too busy. I get distracted easy. The problem is whenever you make these statements, you are, you are making a claim with your words that you'll live your life in a way to make right. Yeah. So you'll get distracted. You'll let people take your time. You'll, you'll never learn that thing because it's not, it's not in alignment with what you already said. Yeah. So I'm real big on, okay, so you're not a person that, that's, no, I'm not good with time. Okay, cool. How do we get you to be able to say you are? Well, you just start with you are. Okay, maybe right. I'm not the greatest at it, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting better at it. And then you're like, you know, I'm, I'm good with my time. And then you start saying that, and you start living in a way to make that right. You yeah. hold boundaries. You keep things off. You, you get your work done. Like, you, you say, hey, I can't hang out with you tonight. I got this thing I already said yes to. Because the problem for a lot of people is they'll say yes to their dreams, but then the moment somebody asks something of them, they say no to it to say yes to them. Mm. And it's like, I, ha I, was, I said yes to the five, five to six o'clock. I'm going to launch this podcast, and then five o'clock comes. Hey, man, you want to go uh, watch this show? Ah, uh, come on, man. All right. Right. Now, I, <laughs> that I, I got to say no to yeah. something I already yeah. said yes to. Right. How am I going to get my dreams met, man? Yeah. So I, when I have this stuff set out, I can, I can say no to you without feeling bad because I know my yes for something else was already too big. Right. Right. And that's, that's that, the prioritizing too, right? You know, focus, big priority. Um, you know, but once you get that in play, and I'm, I'm just soaking it all in, man. Um, it's kind of like a reminder about my schedule and about the calendar. Right. Like it's hey, really I do it a lot. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it it's really always is. the same for people. I'm telling you, dude, here's the thing. If people, if people just did what they already know to do, they would change their lives. Oh man. That's, a, that's yeah. That's, that's I mean, that's the key to it. Right. It's like, just, you already know what to do. Yeah. People, people, there's so much, there's so much information so prevalent. Yeah. But the issue isn't a matter of whether I know it. If what people know and have experienced matched their, their, from their inside to the outside, they'd all, we'd all be billionaires. Yeah. I'm, right. I myself include that. I don't do everything I know to do. I just right. I don't have the time or the desire to do some of it, to be honest. But so many people desire success, and they're, they're seeking more information. They're addicted to strategies and books. And, but no one goes, am I addicted to executing on it? Mm. Am I addicted to the point of, like, I read it, now it's got to get done? And a lot of people don't. And so... No wonder why people feel like they should be farther along by now. You've, right. you've made the investment of money into something, but you got shelf esteem. I bought the book and I put it on the shelf. I yep. feel good about yeah. it. <laughs> you yep. do the work, man. Yep. So if you just you separate those two and do that, I'm telling you, but it changed people's lives. Wow. Wow. No, that's, that's, that's amazing. Um, how, how it's, it's really amazing to see how far you've gotten along with it and, and, and being able to pinpoint it right to now it's like, again, being at the point of uh, the succession period of it, right? So it's like, okay, now now I'm in the success of knowing that all I had to do was get it right. Once I got it right, now it continues to propel me every single day um, yeah. moving forward. Now, along the way, right? Along the way of building up. get it right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Do you have, or is, is there a, um, let me ask a better question. How has a failure, right, or an apparent failure um, affected you or set you up for later success, right? Do you, do you have a, a favorite failure? Uh, a favorite? Yeah, my, my marriage. My marriage failed. That was fun. Oh, no. It was, it was, well, it wasn't fun. It was incredibly <laughs> Is that right? It didn't miss it. But no, it's exactly. one of those, you know, it, and there's a lot that goes into that. So first off, I want to preface with this. There's a structure I teach, and I'm happy to teach real quick about failure and how I utilize it. Now, anybody can use it to be able to take it and failure and use it as a fuel. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But to be honest, if, if it didn't fail, I don't, I don't start the process of leveling up not only myself, but like everything around me. 
Because mm -hmm. you get complacent. Like, I, I think that the home drives so much of the way we show up outside of the home. Mm -hmm. If, like, I'm unsettled at home or my wife and I are fine, like, I don't even do well, uh, like, on stages when I go speak or, like, mm -hmm. anything. I'm not, I'm not mm -hmm. a good a place. I mean, we have our good little, you know, tits. We're human. But, man, if we're, like, in one, like, I can't. Like, when I used to play sports, it was, like, a rule. We don't fight. If it's something that bothers you, you save it until after the game. Like, <laughs> yeah, I can't, yeah, like, right. can't breathe that right. into, uh, into the game. And it would, it would trigger with me, man. It really yeah. would. And so, uh, so one thing is that was a big failure because it taught me like where I need to step up as a human in multiple areas and how I was, and we all are the common denominator in all of our life's problems. We're the one consistent in everything. It's true. And when you, right. when you grasp that, when you sit yeah. back and go, oh, it doesn't mean there's something broken. It just means you got to improve somewhere and you right. got to be open to improving. Um, but failure is a big thing because people, we experience failure in multiple levels and we don't realize what it's really telling us. And we always hear it, pull the lesson, silver lining but no one teaches how to do that. And right. So I found like a good little process to work through it. There's like six levels of it. And the top level is what's called abject failure. It's, a, it's like the end of the world, can't come back, it's, it's done, right? It's horrible. Below that's what's called structural, something really, really big, you know, a piece breaks. It's a hard one to fix, but it's fixable, right? Abject is death. The pumpkin broke, can't put it back together. Structural is something happened in a marriage and it fell apart, right? Mm -hmm. But it can be fixed, just be really hard to do it. Glorious is like, F this, smoke a stove, I'm out of here, right? I don't forget. The problem is those top three, they hurt. Yeah. I don't want to look at it, right? I don't yeah. want to go, I don't want to focus on it. So what I do is I don't learn, any less. there's no silver lining. That hurt too bad. Every time I think about it, ah, oh, right. you know, I don't want to think about it, didn't right. drink it away, right? Right. The bottom three are big. The bottom three are what's called pretty much common failure. Why the apology was made. I'm sorry this happened. I learned from it. I'm not going to do that again. Then you have the two that are most important. One below that's called version failure. Version means this version broke. I'm going to learn and make a new one. iPhone, what I'm on right now, an iPhone 11 or something. Right. This exists because iPhone 1 existed. Right. And they didn't say, hey, people didn't like this. Uh, no more phones. They said, let me fix that version. Right. <laughs> right. 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 And what most people don't realize is that's a big thing for relationships, for business, always versions. You got to go out there and say, I'm going to do the best I can. Mm -hmm. When the world tells me what's wrong with it, fix it. Don't shut down. Yeah. The bottom one's called predicted. Predicted tells me like, hey, it's going to go wrong. I'm waiting for it to go wrong. I'm putting water in a bucket to find the holes. When I played sports, every time I went to practice, it was a predicted failure. I'm going to get yelled at. Right. 100%. <laughs> But I went out there. It was cool. I'm going to learn from it. I know it's yeah. going to break. But business for me is predicted failure. I'm waiting for something to break so I can figure out how to fix it, right? Yeah. So I say this all to say, in life, a lot of us have had version, common, or predictable failures. You made them all abject. Mm. Didn't take the lesson. We, or it's structural. I didn't learn. I walked away. The relationship failed. I'm unlovable. No, you're not. You just you suck because you can't communicate, and you're just yeah. you're mean to people. Right, right, right. Learn to be better as, right. as a, a human being. Or the, I'm I'm never gonna win in business. No, yes you can. You're yeah. a bad product. You didn't do the right marketing. You didn't understand right. the marketplace well enough. That version sucked. But go go try it again. What happens is most people they will fail. It feels like a ten of pain. Right. End of the world. It hurts. So we put it really high. Right. When it really shouldn't be. You learn something from it. That version sucked. Let me try it again. Okay, it's a nine of pain. An right. eight of pain. A seven of pain eventually gets to zero pain you don't it doesn't hurt anymore but it's not a zero like it doesn't hurt it's joy yeah i guarantee with you doing this you build a, a cool page you got some traction i know you've had versions that like right. oh, didn't work right. and climb right. and climb and climb right you love this now like it's a right. joy to put in. people said hey thank you post it on here hey i love the swag don't tell me you don't love those little comments <laughs> that come through right it's joy yeah and yeah. when those come through man that's yeah. what you're looking for because at that wow. level it's a tick and now you look like it's easy man he makes it look easy it is i found a way to learn the versions to make it great i can still improve but i'm enjoy while i do it no matter what it is the same concept applies yeah hey that's that, that's bars that's bars again if you're listening you are on the check-in right now you need to go ahead and play that back in the podcast go ahead and play that last that four or five minutes they're just just focusing on the level of failure so that way we know and i always say you know failure is not a failure unless you do nothing with it True. right then it becomes you know just a, a a stepping stone right so just focusing on what about it can you like you say get out of it and apply it because again if you if you don't apply you just get stuck in it then you know then you you let it defeat you but but focusing on that and i i love to what you said about the the common denominator of all my problems is me. It ain't. It ain't. This guy, man. <laughs> ain't the market. It's you, uh, bro. It's, Figure it's it so, out. It's so funny, though, because, like, people think, oh, it's something wrong with everybody else. Like, how, 
how the hell is this all wrong? Everybody else? Everybody. 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 Well, you know, because it, it's difficult for a lot of people. Uh, you know, it's a social world we have a society. Nobody wants to look like they they suck. No one wants yeah, right, right. No one gives themselves permission to not be perfect. We'll all say it. Oh, I'm not perfect. But the moment somebody points an imperfection out, you try to cover up with the ego. It hurt. Yeah, that hurt. <laughs> right? So, so now what happens is you never give yourself permission to improve in that area. So you keep cycling through the same pain over and over. Yeah. And in the moment, like I call egos what it is. It's everyone's greatest obstacle, EGO. And the moment you can climb past that, man, like and get over it, I'm telling you, it opens up so many more gateways to people doing better because now you've given yourself permission to improve in something. So like my son plays sports, you know, my youngest. He's figuring out football and he's, you know, catching the footballs, running routes, and I gotta go and tell him, hey, do this. I know, I know. No, you don't know. You would have done that, you know? <laughs> yeah. And the yep. ego, you can see his ego coming up because no one wants to be wrong. And it's even yeah. worse on social in the world we live on. But wow. if you could be a person, think about the, the best people that we know. They're like, hey, you know, I messed up. My bad. Right. Because now now I can be around you. Now I can I can have a conversation. I can hear what you have to say to me. It's a different level of when someone's confident enough in themselves to admit an imperfection. But they get better. That's why they can say it. Now they get better and better and better. And it's a more of a joy to be around them. And they create and have more success. Absolutely. Now, I think another component of that, too, is is being able to take it from other people, right? You talked about the ego, right? And focusing on yeah. that. So like, once you're able to, to fully uh, accept advice, to fully accept um, constructive criticism, like those things also, you know, you talked about the fuel uh, in relation in relation to the failure. Like those things also fuel you because, like, okay, well, okay, it helps me to get to that point a little bit quicker. I'm like, ah, I didn't even think about it that way. If we open to kind of take those blinders off and listen to other yeah. people, sometimes, you know, not everybody. <laughs> should. <They're, laughs> right. I, I recommend. I tell people you need to have a triad. A triad. Think about like a cell phone tower. You want to find out where somebody's at. You got to ping it from the triad, right? Yeah. The triangulate. Right. I think if you if you have people if you're in business. One person needs to be in your industry that you trust and you respect. Big key. I got to respect them to be able to tell me things that I don't want to hear right. and listen, right? So one person right. in my industry in business, someone in business, not my industry, someone not in business at all. These three people for me have always given me this cool kind of like an uh, area to be able to triangulate where I'm at. I'll get mm -hmm. feedback about something and go, oh, that, nah, that's what it really is. I need to work on this. But if you have people that are firing back at you that you don't respect and you take in the craziness, yeah. I'm telling you, man. Right. It ends up being this recipe for disaster. I get comments all the time on my things. Yeah. And what ends up happening is I get to this point I'm trying to figure out, like, really, like, what do I, younger, like, younger me, like, how do I make this person not think that about me? And not, I'm not going to serve everybody. Right. Everybody didn't love Jesus. Everybody's right. not going to love me. And right. that's okay. I'm <laughs> right. going to do me. Right. But the reality is, is if I respect this person, I'll take the insight. If I yeah. don't, it's usually coming from a space of somebody who's dark inside. And, and if I think about it, like there should be more compassion and pity for that human than trying to go back and forth in an argument. So most of my time when I get, I was on live earlier today, someone's put up the, the middle finger and, and like, man, what kind of place do you gotta be at in your life to feel like you need to do it to another human being? Right. You right. gotta be in it. So it's like, I'm not gonna meet you down there. You can come to my level. You wanna come, cool. If you don't, I'm not coming down there. Right. But that's where I start looking at the way that people take it inside and who they take it from. And it could yeah. be, it could be good, some of it, but not all of it. No, I, 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 I love that. And, you know, again, not to talk too much about this thing that called social media, man, but it, it, you know, a lot of people let it take them into another, you know, it's to another horrible. realm um, yeah, yeah. Versus, weird, versus, versus sticking to who you are and, and, and leveling up from there. Um, again, you guys are here on the check-in with Black Menswear. I've got special guest Anthony Trucks on with us today. Anthony, I'm going to ask you this one last closing question. All right, I'm ready All for right. it. This question is, and this is how I close every episode of the check-in. All right. If you could have a billboard, all right, anywhere with anything on that billboard, yeah, what would it say and why? Basically, uh, what is your yeah. message to the world? Well, it's weird. I actually was on a billboard. Uh, okay. <laughs> I did. It was when I was in college on a billboard. What did I didn't know what it said? It said like uh, someone was like uh, tough. It was a coverage thing. I don't know. Anyways, it's, it's but I was on a billboard. It was it was yeah. weird, up in Oregon. Um, what would it say at this moment in time? It would, it would say make shift happen. Literally, I have, look at this. I got over here. You got it, right. neon right. sign that says make shift happen. Make shift and happen. in the yeah. world of what I do, you get what it means. And move the F, you get what it is, right? It, right. It's this, my life, if we went and unpacked my life, it's been a collection of weird moments of me doing things that should not have statistically been my life. Man, I, I, foster care alone, 
75% of inmates in any prison in America are former foster kids. Half our homeless population spent time in foster care. Less than 1% of us graduate from college. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I was the 0 0.02 of college athletes that made it to the NFL. Like, it's not – statistically, I'm a weird anomaly. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and at this point in my life, man, I, I'm always trying to see what's the bonus rounds. And everybody should be this way, not just me. Once you've hit a certain level of, like, man, people didn't think I'd get here, it's all bonus rounds. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, it's all – think about, like, a video game, like Mario. Right, right, right. I beat right, all the right. mushrooms. I'm happy. I beat the level, but let me get the mushrooms. Yeah. And, and I think the idea of making shift happen is, like – I got to shift how I see the world so I can change how I show up in the world and create. And the billboard is all about like, hey, get up every day with a perspective of how do I make a shift happen inside so I can live a different life outside to make something magical happen for my life. Because we all have the capacity. Mm -hmm. And I, people hear this a lot. And it, it, I don't, I hate they don't, it doesn't resonate in the land. <clears throat> but if you think about a teacup, like if, or a, a, a glass, like a lot of us are living with this 16 ounce cup that we've got two ounces in and we're cool with it. And for me, it's like, damn it, if you can, if what's your favorite beverage, man, you want some sweet tea, why don't you put the other 14 well, ounces and fill the damn thing up, you know? Yeah, so yeah. make something happen, because we can. Like, we all, with the world connectedness we have, right. the information is so much more. Like, we've got to get to the point of trying to fill this cup up, man, and make shift happen. That's my billboard. I'd put it everywhere. I'd tattoo it on my face. No, I wouldn't do all that. <laughs> but that's it, man. Make that's shift a good, that's it. And, it's, and it's, it's to the point, it's memorable. Make shift happen. Um, yeah. Every each each and every day, and that's it. Doesn't matter where you are, you can make shift happen, right? <laughs> All day. It, yeah. it, it ain't gonna like be that. like you don't have to like go and like make shift happen, build a billion dollar business. Make shift happen in your marriage, man. Right. Make shift happen right. in your health. Whatever right. your ver don't take my scale. Don't take somebody's arbitrary scale. Spend time at home. What would be great for me? What could I achieve and be happy with, regardless of the rest of the world? Because the world can always tell you there's more. Because there always yeah, is. Right. But what, what was your, what's your thing? And then ha make that shift happen. Do that yeah. and be happy with it. I yeah. love people who are happy. Nine yeah. to five job, whatever. If you have a nine to five and you love it, I love you. But if you have a nine yeah. to five and you hate it, change something. Make, make shift happen. happen for life. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Tap in. Make shift happen. Yeah, well, my man. brother, man, I, I really appreciate you, Mr. Trucks, Anthony, for joining us today. Um, for, for those that don't know, you know, how to get to you, let them know how to find you on social media, online. How can they yeah. get to Anthony Trucks? Uh, man, here, go shoot me a message in the inbox. Uh, if you DM me the word shift, I, I know the kind of people who find me from podcasts, I'm like, yeah, I'll have a conversation there. So it, IG is easy. If you want to text me, go to textanthony.com. If you want to see what I'm actually about, uh, just go to anthonytrucks.com. You'll find all the stuff over there. Man, I, I appreciate it, man. And make shift happen, everybody. Don't listen to this and not, right? You have no excuse yeah. now. Uh, you, you really have you know, no excuse. It, it's up to you uh, to actually make that shift happen. So, again, Brother Trucks, man, I appreciate you taking your time Welcome. out. Happy early birthday to you once again. Thank you, thank you. Enjoy, enjoy tomorrow. And uh, keep, keep making a difference out there, brother, for real, man. You too, man. I appreciate it. This is cool. I, I, uh, I, I like seeing uh, other men of color doing cool things with a positive spin. Not that everybody's right. not positive. But I, lo I love seeing what you built, man. I seriously have a great nah, respect that. just, appreciate just that. for the fact that there's people on and watching, which tells me more about you than you probably know. Because not everybody shows up for people, stays on the lives, has this flow. There's something behind the scenes that's magical that, that you do as a solid human that I know just by what I've seen you create to now. So, man, kudos to you, bro. Send in love. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, fam. Appreciate you, man. Well, enjoy, enjoy your day. Enjoy the month of December. Enjoy the rest of the year. Uh, post Thanksgiving. Merry Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Happy New Year. Push all that <laughs> all to you, man. But uh, y'all be Thank blessed you. over there. All right.